Hello YouTube, Triumph Guy here today and um, if you've seen my previous video about the emission failure on this Peugeot 208 then you'll realise that it's been burning oil. However this time um, I've had a look and it's not burning oil anymore after I've fixed the PCP. It's now um, too rich. So it's the other thing which is annoying about this car is if this was my Triumph Spitfire, I'd take a 90 mil to the bottom of the carburetors and just manually turn down the fuel. Have on this because it's all sensor led. Uh, we need to diagnose which sensor or what part has failed, um, which has then made it uh, go wrong. Oh, and the, the family's back as well, which is quite cool. So as you can see, lots of smoke from the exhaust, so we're going to remove the plugs, I do all three, and uh, that should tell you if it's coolant, oil, or fuel you're burning in excess of. So when you do this, um, just check, do all three, I mean I know this because I've already had a look, but they're all, all three of them are, are like this, let's just see if it will, uh, as you can see, all that black soot around there it just says it's heavily rich another thing is this ceramic coating here is also there so um if you can't see any of that then it just says that it's really really rich as you can see on the previous video it was burning oil and i would suspect that it was burning both but the oil was more prominent do it across all three and the important reason we're doing it across all three is if it's just one you know that it's an injector Whereas, as we know now, it's obviously a problem with either a sensor, the fuel rail itself, or a number of other things. So let's get this back in and uh, conduct the rest of the tests. So we're now going to point out a couple of components it could be before going into the diagnostics itself. So let's get to it. So it could be the um, PCV valve, which we've diagnosed in a previous video, and that's why this engine was burning oil. The other thing it could be is potentially the throttle body. It could be a vacuum leak between this whole um, inlet manifold here because the, the map sensor measures the pressure from here all the way to here and into the cylinders, okay? So it could be about that. The other thing which could make it run rich is it could be uh, the first O2 sensor or if you look down there, I'll just zoom in for you there, the other O2 sensor there at the bottom of the catalyst converter. It could, in fact, be the catalyst converter, which could be an issue. And, you know, you can measure the temperature before the cat and after the cat using a wireless uh, temperature gauge to see if it is that. And there's a couple of other diagnoses we, we could do. Could be a dirty air filter. Okay, not enough air. But I have just changed this recently on a YouTube video just before I've done this. The other thing it could be is the fuel rail, which you can't really see, but it's around the back there. And um, could also be individual in injectors. But we've already ruled out the fact that it's an individual injector because all three are identical. And all these sensors and all these bits feed the ECU with information which tell it that what to do, what to do I, uh, fuel, could be advance or retard the um, spark. The other thing could be a spark plug, but we've changed them recently. Yes, they will need a clean up. Um, but all three are spoiled. The other thing it could potentially be is the temperature and um, the temperature pressure, uh, the temperature sender, which would indicate which these engines like to be at optimum running temperature, which is 90 degrees. And what these cars do is they will inject more fuel to increase the engine temperature to get it to the optimum temperature. So let's go plug in the diagnostics and let's see um, how so we get on. So before the car's even on, we're going to open up the dash. There is a plastic cover there, but um, I don't have it on because this car always has problems. Take the diagnostics reader and plug it in. The car ignition is on now. We're going to go into the diagnostics tool, and this was cheap, it was 20 quid, and we're just going to go into diagnostics. If it's got any codes, then obviously that, that would be a key indicator of what's wrong, but in this case it doesn't. So we're going to go into here, and we're going to go into live data. We're going to check the temperature, which is 21 degrees. We're also going to check this, the IMAP, yeah, so the manifold sensor, and make sure it's reading around 100. 
If you're above sea level, it should be 102, and it should be around that figure. Now we're going to go down, check to see if there's anything else which is directly out. As you can see, both the O2 sensors are reading at 0.45 volts. That's about correct for this thing. Keep going down, and that should all be good. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the car on. And we're just going to make sure that any of these sort of sensors, which I was talking about earlier, aren't stuck. So if we go here, also check your temperature gauge there, but also check the temperature gauge here, make sure that they line up. As you can see here, both the O2 sensors are jumping around and that would, you know, say there's probably something wrong with the fuel, fuel mixture, but we'll get back onto them in a minute. IMAP 41, that's about right. It should be about 30 to 40 at idle. As you can see, you've got the RPM just below there. Gonna go up here, just check the temperature. And we're gonna make sure, an easy fix of this, just make sure the temperature rises with the vehicle and making sure that when it gets to 90, that this reads the same. And then it, it should mean that the, the temperature sensor's all good. So the IMAP, as you can see, is when that which seems a bit high at the moment, but we're just gonna give it another little rev. Bring it down. And I'm actually gonna compare this to a friend's vehicle of, I know, he's actually got the same car. So stay tuned for Monday. I'll um, put a short up on if they do compare. The other thing you're checking for now is to make sure that both these two sensors here, the OB2S1 and the OB2S2, are both moving because it's, it's it's quite common that sometimes one of these isn't moving which then means that they could potentially be wrong we can go here and check the o2 sensor test as you can see all of these i'm not going to go into them all, all pass this could be due to the fact that this um diagnostic kit isn't the best in the world Fuel system B1 is a fail and it's at zero, which isn't uncommon. Um, they, can, they can fail and um, they can also be on zero, but I would say they, they potentially are something wrong. All what we've found out so far is- So what have we found out? We found out basically what we've, we know so far, that it's running rich, okay? We've diagnosed that via the exhaust. We've diagnosed that via the sparks. We've also diagnosed that by looking at the diagnostics. Nothing really at this point is pointing me in a in a point which could be wrong, but I'm gonna go over a couple of things. This sensor right here, okay? I've already cleaned it once and it was after the PCV. And um, all you do is you remove this eight mil bolt, you undo this by pulling that out and pull the, the, sense, the, uh, the connector off and then check the sensor. Mine was covered in all, so I cleaned it up, gave it the benefit of the doubt, and everything was fine. Now, when I get uh, the results of my friend's car, it should tell us if this sensor is reading correctly. But if this sensor is playing up slightly, it could be the sensor, or you could have a vacuum leak in this system here, okay? So all you're gonna do is you can use a fancy smoke tester if you want, but what I would do is take this off, plug this with something, Rub a glove on there and then either pump air through here, making sure it's sealed, or what I've used before is a cigar and a pipe and blown smoke for it to see if there's any air leak. These are pretty rubbish inlet manifolds, they're made out of plastic, they've got seals on the back. To remove it, you've got to lower the engine, it's a bit of a nightmare, but there is five bolts around there and they can crack and it can introduce a vacuum. Another thing you may find with this engine is actually when it's running hearing a hissing sound from here and that would indicate a vacuum leak and it could be with any of these um, pipes uh, around here. So just make sure that they're all so make sure on. they're all pushed on right they're not coming off all of them that's the vacuum to the, um, the brake booster this is another hose just make sure that they're all they're all pushed on. So quiet. we've gone through some of the following things so let's recap slightly so if the map sensor 
it's not over a hundred it's not a hundred or 102 98 to 102 then we know that that is wrong if the map sensor isn't moving when we're revving it we know it's wrong and i'm going to check the data against my friend's car we also know if we're looking at the o2 sensors and they're not sort of moving up and down slightly fluctuating then we know that one of them is wrong if one of them just sat still we've also checked that the temperature gauge is correct so what do we check next we could potentially move the heat shield and check the temperature from here and at the bottom of the cap and make sure that they're equal but on this particular car with the sort of readings i'm 95 percent sure it's a problem with the, the the fuel rail itself which annoyingly we are going to have to after vacuum testing this we are going to have to remove this to get to it another thing to remember is if you are running slightly over on these admission tests do the old italian tune up right give it a good floor flooring round put some red x in on 10 liters in the tank then put some premium fuel in it and hope for the best but this one is definitely definitely running rich you know that could be spark plug change it could also be air filter change but this is is not running right so i'm personally think that it's to do with the fueling system i think it could be the fuel rail or the fuel uh, regulator please let me know in the comments if you think that i'm wrong i please i really hope that i have helped someone and if you've got any questions put them in the comments and i'll get back to you and i'll try and help you out of yours stay tuned for the, the the monday diagnostics compared to my friend's car and then we'll see what values are normal see you on the next one